Here with me are Imam Dean Sharif, also Rabbi Matthew Gewurz, and also Father Edward Beck. Um, let, let me start with you, uh, Father Beck. We were just speaking in the commercial break, and you said one of the questions that your congregants have come to you with over the last four weeks of this fighting is where are the Christians in all of this? Because you have Palestinian Christians, you have Christians living in Jerusalem. Yeah, you know, Puppy, it's interesting. If you visit the region, as I have, Bethlehem, that whole area in the West Bank, used to be 70% Christian. It is now 3% Christian. So you see, the Palestinian Christians have been really pushed out of that area as well. So this fighting isn't just, unfortunately, it's three religions that wind up fighting, and they have different concerns, but I think they can't get lost in it. When you have a people who's oppressed in any way, or if they are fearful in any, any way, often they are going to respond violently. So if you take away the oppression mm -hmm. and you take away the fear, then perhaps you take away the violence. And I think that's what we're missing in this. How do we do that as a community of faith? And to you, Rabbi, we were speaking at length earlier today, and, and you were telling me about uh, feeling a bit torn, the fact that you support Israel, you support uh, defending itself, but at the same time, you have seen over history that violence does not accomplish the ends that are necessary. Yeah, 100%. I am four square for my homeland. I, I feel a great sense of fear for what it is that's happening there. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, I also know that uh, violence uh, does not result in any kind of everlasting reconciliation and peace. So somehow I'm hoping that we can, uh, when we get past uh, this military part, that we're going to be able to hold each other's fears, both for ourselves and for others, and to be able to find a way to find those who actually want to talk about peace to yeah. sit down and speak. You know, both the Islamic faith and the Jewish faith preach compassion uh, for, for the people in, in the faith, but also people from outside the faith. And I, I've met Jews and Muslims across the region many times, and, and I sense that compassion. This conflict strains that compassion. And I wonder when you're speaking to your congregants and you try to you know, get them to separate from, from the strong and sometimes angry emotions uh, connected to this battle there, how do you bring them back to, to the compassion that's really at the core to get them to, to, to see the other side. I think it's important to understand that mercy is one of the principal attributes of Almighty God, and that is a principal attribute that is to be demonstrated in the human being's life as well. However, it's important to realize that justice is also a very important concept in Islam, that justice must be rendered to all people equally. So therefore, in Islam, it is acceptable for people to defend themselves when an injustice is actually being administered to them. However, justice must be administered with mercy. Justice must be administered with compassion. And justice must be administered with certain degree of equity. What we find existing in, in the situation in Palestine and in Israel is that there is an injustice that is being administered. And I think it's important for all the religions that are affected by this conflict to bring themselves back to the scriptural understanding of how conflict is to be resolved within each one of these scriptures. What is missing in the narrative is the sincere scriptural understanding of how people resolve differences. Too much of what is being discussed is political in nature and not necessarily scriptural in nature.